Hello, hello. Anybody there? Hello, Terry. Are you there? No, no, she's muted, muted, muted. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi, Ray. Hi, everyone. Hey, Kadeem. Oh, Carrie, nice to see you last night. I almost just forgot that I saw you last night. That was fun. It was. Nice meeting your sister. Oh, thanks. I'm in for good. Hello, Holly. Good afternoon. Thank you for that. Oh, thanks. Um, Kadeem, Holly. Yes, Mr. Chair. I'm looking through the roster here and I'm seeing Diane Carey. And that's it. That's it. Abby um, is on her way. Abby's on her way. On her Val way. will not be here. Correct. I know Steve just left the office and I believe he went to log in. So I do think Steve should be here. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait a little bit longer. All righty. Well, we actually have a quorum, so what I should be doing is starting the meeting because we have, we have enough to get us uh -huh. through the preliminaries. Uh, What's your hot stop? Who's that speaking? Okay, so I'm going to get this meeting rolling because we do have a quorum. So uh, here comes our boilerplate. Uh, good. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> As a preliminary matter, this is Ray Pohl, chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present can hear me. So, so far we have Diane Coombs. Hi. Thank you. Carrie Thornwell. Here. Very good. Is that it for now, folks? Yeah. That is it for now. All right. For the record, uh, Ray Pohl, so that is a quorum. Um, 
Staff, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Holly Backus. Present. Kadeem McCarthy. Present. Very good. Um, anticipated speakers as they arrive uh, for the applications. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the HDC is convening by video conference via Zoom app is posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. <clears throat> Excuse me. Accordingly, Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Before we get to the first item, let's go through some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct, conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Before I allow the members to speak, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting on Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken today will be done via roll call. All right. Uh, thanks. And could we get no a move? Thank you, Diane. So the motion was made to approve today's agenda. Um, on that motion, Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, so that motion carries. I make a motion to approve consent. And looks like. We don't have any conflicts there, so I will take that motion and on that motion, carry. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, motion carries. Um, you... FYI, Stephen has joined you. Okay, so Stephen is with us. Let the record reflect that. Hi, Stephen. Hey, hola. 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 Um, now, I have a question. Hey, uh, I believe Abigail Camp is also in. Oh, our Abby, are you there? Are you here? Not yet. Oh, not yet. But I have a question. Yep, an answer. I hope. Yeah, I, I think you'll be able to provide me with an answer, but I'm just having difficulty remembering. I see Ann Duez in the queue. And my recollection is, you know, she's broadcasting from uh, Europe, I believe. And you can just nod if that's true. Yeah, okay. So there, there was some item, I think it might be an other business item. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't believe it is yet. I did, I've been trying to get to all my emails and I saw that there was a correspondence between you and Ann asking for something to be added to an agenda. Unfortunately, there was not time, so it was not added to today's agenda, and I do apologize in advance for that. Um, the best I could do is add it to Tuesday's agenda um, well, based on your Okay, so here, here is the issue on that. Because of the time difference, like where Ann is, yeah. it would be like three o'clock in the morning. Oh. I think. So she needs, to, she needs to be on a Thursday's agenda. That's okay. why it's coming up now. But so, Anne, I know you're muted, but I'm sorry that it's not on today's agenda, but it will be on next Thursday's agenda. Um, hopefully that's all right with you. Um, Mr. Chair, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem okay, with that. Okay, and I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, but, Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair. Uh, uh, thanks, Anne. 
Yes, Kadeem. Through you, can I get like two words on what this is exactly? I will, of course, get to the email, but just so I can have it on my okay. copy. Uh, well, let's see if Ann's still there. Are you still there, Ann? I am, Mr. Chair. Okay, great. Could you just give Kadeem a little bit of a run through? Yes, Kadeem. Um, I've been concerned, um, as you can imagine, for a while about the problems that you all have been having with um, people coming to you with what are in, a, in essence zoning issues. Yep, um, and so I, um, I have taken it upon myself to draft a citizen warrant article to redefine residential uh, pool, uh, swimming pools, residential and hot tub spa that I hope um, if it passes will at least take away these zoning issues from the HDC. The, um, the, the select board upheld the denial of the spa last week that we all know about, um, but that is just one spa, whether or not the owner will appeal to the Nantucket Superior Court uh, or further, which could potentially give some relief on a better explanation of what visibility means. Um, we don't know if he will do that or not, but I decided that we needed to do much more fundamental um, redressing of the problem and get at the at the basic zoning issue. That's so, perfect, Mr. Uh, Chair. That's that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Ann. I will get that yeah. added to Thursday, the twenty eighth. Right. Um, and and I think all Ann is looking for is uh, at the at the beginning of the agenda. Just I'm. We, the, every member of the HEC recognizes that this is a hot button issue that we would rather not be the ones um, uh, that are sort of the go to on um, for a lot of different reasons. Anyway, I, I want to um, hear and speak on the language of the article and have us, you know, basically if, if we like the language or uh, want to alter the language in any way. Um, be able to give her some support on on that effort. So um, I would like to see that at the beginning of next Thursday's agenda, if you don't mind. You've got so, it, sir. No discussion, of course, because that was that was uh, and uh, you know uh, not noticed, but it was just informational for Kadeem. So thank you, Ann. Next week, and now we will go to new business, but let's see. You have to explain something to me, Kadeem, on nine Cabot. Yep, um, so both of these applications were new business applications that were held for revisions, but you guys wanted to see them sooner rather than later. So they didn't go with old business. They were just, uh, they remained where they were. Did we get we've changes gone... on them? Sorry, say that again. Did we get uh, revisions? Because that was oh, the so up. nine cabot. We do not have revisions yet. So I was going to ask that we hold that. I did speak to Teresa, and she said it would not. Uh, she, it might be ready for Tuesday, if not Tuesday, definitely Thursday. So I'm happy to just keep it at the top of the the agenda where it is, if you so choose. Uh, uh, I think that's fine. But the other thing that we'll need is you have it down as new business, but it's kind of old business, but we- Yeah, I can absolutely do some changes there to clarify. Can you, hold on. We need to have the, the members that sat listed in the same way that we would for old business so I know who was actually uh, sitting on the application. Absolutely. That's, that's for Tuesday or whenever, okay? Okay. So do you need a motion from us to hold that for Tuesday? Terry, that's your call. I, I still don't yeah. know how that works. Terry, sorry about that. I make the if you address it in the as an amended part of the agenda, no. But since um, all right, it, so it we'll, just so um, what I am concerned about is um, that oh you know really only Abby, Diane, Steve, and Carrie should be voting on it since they're the sitters. Say the the, the names again. Sorry, I Go have ahead. Abby. Yes. Diane, Stephen, and Carrie. Oh, and that, I think that was based on my last set of minutes. Okay. Well, so um, Abby, could you chair that then? We're just looking to have you look for a motion to move it to Tuesday. That's all. Make that motion. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Um, let's see. Val, are you there? Val's not no. here today and okay. not on this 
Uh, okay, so who do we Hi. have? Hi. Stephen, is that you? Hi. Thank you. Karen, and I, is John here? Or John Karen? is not, and he's not voting. Carrie is voting. Yep, I'm an I. Carrie. Okay. We can open. Virginia. And Diane on her motion. I, ca I can't. I. Is there anybody else on the? Diane um, on her motion. Aye. Yes. And then you're you're. Are you in favor, Abby? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So that's moved. So, uh, how about uh, three Henderson? Anybody here on that one? I am here. Hi, Ray. Hi, everybody. Hey. All right. So here we go. Myself, Abby's here. Diane is here. Val is not. Stephen is. So you have a four-person board. You good with that? That is fine. Thank you. All right. Let's go. Okay. So um, last time we had some on the uh, south elevation, which faces towards the circle uh, at the end of Henderson. So what we did per your request and suggestion is the two-story elevation where the chimney is towards the front. Yes. Uh, we, we took them off that elevation entirely. Um, okay. We moved them to the back elevations. So really nothing should be visible from the road. The only spot that we may see a tiny bit of a panel um, if we could maybe click, uh, which way up or down a click, uh, there's a view from the street. Yeah, I think that might be the view, right? So right dead smack dab in the center of that elevation of the house. I have a small black dot that panel that comes over across the top row from the backyard towards the front. There's a low intersecting valley there. Yeah. So we might see a small corner of that one panel. I just didn't want to say completely that it wouldn't be seen from the street. Kind of don't understand like that. Um, it appears from the the aerial view that nothing is on the front of the building. Correct. So see where I have the two red lines here with that valley? Yes. yes. Yeah. So I think we may see a tiny bit of the top panel that's all the way towards the the northeast but uh, so the, the top panel because it's just at the top at the ridge and you're going to see like the edge of it yeah you'll see the edge maybe just a tiny corner of that panel tim, the face tim yeah why don't you just drop it down enough so that the edge doesn't show up yeah we we, we will wanted to try to put it out there that okay well i i appreciate your honesty and candor but i mean i think there's a really simple solution to that yep. just just move it down you know four inches and you're good okay yep. Yep. all right thanks um all right board members how how, do, how are we liking the revised proposal from tim i'll go thank you diane with that one problem in hand and we know about it. I think it's good. I don't think you'll see it uh, from the roundabout at Henderson. It, um, it, it, it has got good vegetation on the east side and the, and the west side and actually the north side. So the south side is all and that doesn't face, at least as far as I can see on the uh, site plan, it doesn't face Henderson. Okay, thank you very much, Diane. Stephen. Uh, can we go back to slide seven, please? Okay, and then slide nine. Uh, Tim, this through you, Mr. Chair, the black line here is meant to indicate there will be a solar panel there, as opposed oh. to there, there was one and oh. it's been removed. It's on the, uh, is that on the roof now. Sorry, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, you are correct, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's correct. So on the lower one story roof, there were panels there previously. I was just showing from this elevation, they will they, they will be staying there. The upper two story roof, there are no panels on that roof at all. Okay, so we can go back to the slide eight, please. Okay, okay. I just I did see those on the uh, south. I wanted to make sure. Okay, yep. uh, thank you. No additional comments. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, I think Abby to you okay um i think i'm okay with this okay so am i i appreciate your moving stuff around tim working with the board um can we have a motion make a motion to approve as submitted 
Sounds good to me. Thanks, Diane. On the motion, Stephen. Aye. Very good, Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor, motion carries, thanks, Tim. Thank you all, have a good day. Okay, thanks, you too. Um, old business, couple things here. Let's see if we have quorums on this workshop, APD. I saw Andrew in the queue, we got myself. Abby, no John. Oh, okay, so Andrew, you're there, right? Yes, I am here, Mr. Okay. Chair. So um, this is a four person board because you're lacking John. I'm good with it. You good? Okay, let's yep. go. Yep. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. This is new business? This is old business. These, these are, this is item four, old business from um, uh, a while ago, October 5th. Gotcha. Thank you. Do you, Stephen, do you have an agenda? Well, only the one that's on the website, but I guess I was just misreading it. Okay. We're on item number four. There's uh, two, two applications, both at 22 Easton Street. Gotcha. Thank you. Correct. Okay. All right. So um, I can refresh the board on this. I'm sorry that I didn't get back sooner with this um, based on the other approvals. All of the structures on this property had previously been approved, um, except for the guest house, which was where we last ended off. Um, the guest house is the structure that faces north towards Easton Street. Um, and sort of, as we discussed, if you all remember, it sort of closes the courtyard. Um, our discussion last time was about, um, I think Abby, it was you who sort of came up with this idea of just a simple clean ridge schoolhouse, a little more centered, a little more balanced. Um, previously, I did not have a door facing north, facing Easton Street. And I think we all agreed that it just was sort of turning its back on, on the approach to the property. Um, additionally, the board had, had suggested that I shift the structure a bit more east so that we open up the courtyard a little mm -hmm. bit more so that the house can be seen, which I've done. Um, however, there is a covered porch that stretches off of that eastern side. You can see on the upper right elevation and then wraps back around. Um, I actually really like the building. I think it's very simple. I think it ties in beautifully with the home that, that you approved. Um, and I think opening it up on the courtyard and on the main entry really has um, you know, changed the property. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm hopeful you all will see this as, as a good modification. Um, from what was previously submitted. And that's all I'll say for now. Mr. How, Chair. Uh, yeah, I'll get, to, I'll get to you in a second, Holly. Um, but if we can see the site plan, just to, do you guys hear me all right? Because it just yes. flashed on my screen. The internet connection is, is weak. Mine too. Um, you sound fine. Yeah. I can hear all of you fine. All right. So, um, um so the, the red box shows yeah. the old structure. Oh, I see. So it slid further east. The building Correct. did, but, but the, the fact porch. that you added a porch on the western side is makes it still appear that it's like encroaching. But your your defense of that, of course, would be that the porch is an open thing that you can see through. Thank you. Exactly. That's okay. the idea. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um, all right. So Holly, to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So HSAB did not look at this uh, guest house again, but they did review it back in um, August 16th, which I do think two of their points are still um, you know, relevant for this uh, revision. Okay. This building will be the most prominent structure on the site and could be more appealing. There should be a front door visible from Easton Street. And on that note, yes, there is a now a front um, there. There's a, a front door um, on the on what would typically look like a south or excuse me a side elevation that's facing Eastern Street. Um, maybe it's the configuration of the shed dormers, but that does seem to be a little odd. These are my comments based on the revision. Mm -hmm. um, the gable ends on this structure read more of a front door location versus the side elevation. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair. So can I just add, can I stay on that point just for a second? So Andrew actually added the door that faces Easton Street. I, I think it at our urging, all right? 
Is the uh, HSAB suggesting that the quote unquote front door of this should be on the gate, one of the two gable ends rather than on the eave end? No, they didn't see it. No, they, they did it. not see it. That was my comment based on, on this north elevation as the facade of the yeah. structure that seems to be more of a side elevation, even though now we do All have right. a front door on it. Uh, okay, understood. Thanks that so much for clarifying. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, thank you. So we know what the board is on this. These two applications are the same. It's going to be uh, myself, Abby, Diane, Kerry. Who would like to begin? I'll go. Thank you. Um, I still believe that this is not the right siting for this building. Um, these properties down there are quite open and you get glimpses of the harbor through them, but, you know, next to them, beyond them. And it's a, it's a good looking house. I just still feel like it is walling off something that is more typically at this end of the road, open properties to see through. And this goes against all of that. Um, and I do think it's kind of pretty massive for a little second dwelling when the existing dwelling is should be the focus. And this is totally the focus of this whole property now. Thank you, Carrie. Was that it? Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, Diane? Oh, yeah, Diane, go ahead. I was trying to find the compass points. Uh, can the front door be changed to the west elevation? It wouldn't face the street then, which I think would. Right. Uh, um, and I couldn't find, uh, I can't find the compass point, so I didn't know which so way. Just, just so you know, Diane, the north elevation is the one that faces Easton Street. Okay. Because okay. the. How tall is this guest house? It's 27 feet off grade, Diane. Okay, and how tall is the main house? Um, I believe 32 feet. Well, off I, don't, grade. I don't believe that we go over 24 feet for second buildings, whether it's a guest house or not. Uh, oh, remember, I'm in the floodplain here, Diane, so I'm raised okay. up hang, several hang, feet. Hang on, Andrew. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're raising the building up? Yeah. How many feet? About three feet. And the, and the main house is being raised also. Yeah, well, I'm correct. Not, I'm not uh, well versed on what you can do. Sometimes we we don't raise them up outside, but we drop them down on a mud sill, and so you haven't had uh, very high. I uh, unfortunately I feel much the way that Carrie does. I for a guest house, and when you look at the site plan, the guest house is uh, very not very much littler than the than the main house which there it is um could you, could you go to the site plan please? i just i just now came up with it i just got it and it is the guest house is smaller in in length and actually in width but it carries a lot of presence I guess that's what I'm saying. So it looks big. It looks big from the street. And I I don't know whether you can break the second floor it has to be second floor all the way around, whether you have enough room to drop something down to the first floor to give some break as to sort of many of the buildings that are down there. What is the age? What was the age of the building? The one this is replacing? Yeah. There's probably 60s, Andrew? Right, 55. Correct, 55, yeah. Right, and uh, they weren't so humongous down there and there was more property. You saw more greenery and around to it was sort of, it's why it was such a good drive going down because you could look through and see the harbor all the way down. 
who had doc who didn't so i don't know that uh, i appreciate the door being on on eastern facing eastern street but i would wish there was some way just to bring it down a little bit so it wasn't straight two stories across that's all okay thank you, thank you very much diane abby yeah, um, if we could go back to that north elevation, I, I, I feel that um, overall, I, I think we're, we're making the site kind of overly congested. Um, I, I'd like to see less fenestration um, back to that simpler, I think you at one, one time you had only a one story there. Maybe it was a story mm -hmm. and a half. Yeah. Right, that was the gym building, I think. I, I, Correct. I kind of liked that idea of a, a simple um, story and a half. Uh, I don't really like the addition of the front door on Easton because I think it's drawing attention to it and it, it is a secondary building. I, I, I'm sorry to disagree um, about that. Um, but I think the, the appearance, the overall feeling of this that is that it's congesting the, the site and uh, I, in order to get rid of that overdeveloped feeling of the site I think less fenestration um, less high you know don't make it so tall and um, you know a simpler structure I, I and if it did have to have a front door I would put it off that porch that go that must be on the west I would just make that the entrance to this little cottage. Yeah. Inter Thanks. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Abby. That's interesting because- uh, You'd still and, see it approaching down the street. Yeah, You'd still you, see it as you, you would. I, mean, down the street. I, I actually conceptually, I, I, I'm kind of like starting to embrace that. But mm -hmm. so Andrew, you've heard, already heard a number of comments. I'm just gonna give you <laughs> mine. Didn't go the way I hoped. Uh, and it, it, it sort of like um, takes elements of things that have already been said, but in maybe a slightly different form. This is a nice looking building, but it looks like it was actually sort of stretched out a little bit like silly putty. And that if you lost like, say, four feet of the length and the dormers all went closer together and it got more compact, A, yep you'd be more open on the site and B, it would be less imposing as this like long continuous ridge. And it would feel more like a proper house. Like this, this to me just looks like it has been stretched out, like a really great looking house that just is, sure. is quite a few feet too long. Um, sure. So whether the remedy is to drop, you know, a portion of it down to single story, as Diane said, or, or, or uh, you know, moving the door, I think I, I could be in favor of if you made it shorter, because right now it needs something down there. Understood. Really long. Um, but I do believe that if you move the door to the west elevation under that porch, um, you're still going to see it driving down Easton Street, you'll see it as a front door, like, and it's not facing the street, but you can still see it, which I think is the main intent of that. So that's- And, can I, and can I just, can I just pull Carrie and Diane on the front? If, if the front door is on the west or on the western portion of the north, is yeah. that something that folks would be behind? And if I slid the house 10 more feet towards the east to open it up more? I mean, I still have a lot of room on the setback there to do that combined with everything else you just said, Ray. So I, I um, could go with the door being on the west. Yes, I think it looks more like a door, a front door, even though it's facing west. It looks like a more typical front door going back to that age house. Okay, Carrie, do you agree? I do. I just still think this site is too closed down and reducing, as Ray said, reducing the entire length of it will help and pushing it east um will help also but i really feel like it's just closing it down with a wall on easton street and that's yeah i i think we're all in okay different ways agreeing with that so understood um, 
All right, so I think we can have a couple more revisions on this if somebody would move that. I'll make a motion to hold for revisions. Very good, thank you, Diane. On that motion, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, motion carries. Um, do we want to move forward with is is uh, Mirka on board? She and is. I, I think I feel like we should talk about yeah. it. Yes. We should discuss okay. it. Yes. Well, okay. Fair enough. Are you doing the talking or is Mirka? Uh, or both? Mirka I, will. I will. I will. Good evening. Hi. Um, so this again, so it's uh, the this is the submission for the poll, obviously, and with a hard skip, the uh, with the <clears throat> practically challenge of keeping all these houses uh, elevated. Uh, I tried to work with a set of uh, boardwalks, which would help to bring uh, the access and the. Um, transitioning from the parking between the buildings in a little elevated floor. However, the pool itself with the landscape and everything around it is at grade. And, you know, depending from the guest house would be fully screen behind and uh, it would not be visible. Um, however, so the application is practically for a set of boardwalks, pool and hardscape, lounge patio around it and set of pavers throughout the property for the parking I, itself yeah sorry go yeah, ahead I, I was i was just gonna i was just gonna add i think it's safe to say that whatever happens with the guest house mm -hmm. there will be a hedge enclosure to mm -hmm. conceal the pool from eye level at the street but the house would still be exposed which is the whole idea that we're after mm -hmm. right so just wanted to say add that sorry America. thank you no thank you Mirka, are you finished? Uh, yeah, I'm finished. I'm here. And okay. I think, you know, I'm here. All right. Answer any questions. All right. Thank you. And now let's hear from Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So HSAB took a look at the overall proposal back in August, mm. um, and I wasn't able to um, divulge those comments at, that, at the last hearing um, on the 24th. So I've looked through them and there's actually only one that's not um, relevant to this proposal. So I'm going to give you their comments. Okay. The apron should be brick or Belgian block. The proposed stone blocks are oversized and inappropriate for the neighborhood. The, um, the four foot high picket fence on the street side of the property is too tall. This should be at the traditional height of three feet or less. They can resolve the, the pool fence in a different way or location. I don't I think that is still relevant. The pool appears to be elevated out of the ground. I don't think it is now. Um, maybe visible should be flush with grade. I don't think it's visible. So I will, we'll scratch it that It used comment. to be, Holly. Holly, yeah. it used to be when they Thank looked you. at it, yeah. <laughs> I tried to go through these. Um, there's still a comment, where are the AC units and pool equipment? I didn't necessarily see that on this revision. And then um, there was a comment about what are the long rectangles around the guest house, stones or boards? Um, on the southern part of that um, application or the site plan there. Those are the comments, Mr. Chair. Okay. If I so, could just comment on the HVAC units, we are looking into ways to do geo here so we don't have to have condensers outside. And yeah. the idea is that the pool equipment would be elevated in the roof of the garage inside. Okay, thanks. Sorry. And, yeah, you and can do a closed loop down there. Um, and. and Sorry, okay. but if I may just add, uh, just clarify a few comments. The all hardscape would be the, even including the apron is suggested to be antique granite curbing set flat. Just to want to clarify. So it's within- that, That's what all those little vertical lines Yeah, are. exactly. So that was the idea. And if you scroll through the material page, I think the first page is kind of suggest uh, the hardscape material. So it would be all the antique curbing for the apron and for the pavers. Okay, great. Thanks, Mirka. Okay, board members, what do we think about this? Abby? Yeah, I'm just writing down, what are the big trees on Easton Street that you have on, on either side of the entrance? They, they are, uh, Abby, they are some pre-existing locust trees. Uh, so we will work with the locust trees or plane trees or Chinese elms. Nice. Which are the one which can hold the exposure of the harbor. Mm -hmm. So they're locusts? 
Uh, locals or plant trees or Chinese elm. That's one of those three. I didn't really specify them, but I'm happy to give you more details. Um, so, but, um, so my main, so getting back to the pool, um, I don't mind the pool, but I think it's a bit long and I'd like to have it moved to the east so it's, it's further behind the um, proposed right. guest house. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the, there's too much of that, those granite slabs you just described. Uh, um, I would rather see something more, um, I guess you're going for a beach-like look here with the boardwalk. I don't mind that, but um, I, I don't, I don't really understand the, the granite slabs. Um, I think that could be more, um, rustic or not rustic whatever brand point is what is brand point is more beachy um than hardscape that's all i have thanks okay thanks abby hey by the way andrew uh, something i missed in that discussion is the pool at grade or is it elevated at grade at grade at grade yeah. at grade okay yep. it used to be elevated it was significantly elevated and that is a never going to happen. So it's that great. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Diane, you ready? Yeah. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I just wonder in the site thing, if you go from where the proposed granite apron is and go straight through, I don't know how tall that planting is, but you have a straight, you have a straight line for the pool. If he brought it, if he put it more east and dropped it a little bit, you would get it. I don't mind the width, which is only 12 feet. Um, but he has a spa, which he has to contend with as well. So, and I um, agree with Abby with all the, the boardwalk around. I'd like to see a better definition of what we're really looking at. And... Uh, what kind of, we should see a thing of what kind of fence, the height of it, what the trees are, are, are they deciduous? Are they all year rounders? Because losing those trees out along Eastern Street, you're going to have a view of the pool uh, unless you tuck it down further, I believe. Um, <laughs> I would like to see, you have a lot of steps. I'd like to see what they are. You've got, you have got uh, steps on the upper side, which let's call it, uh, what do we call it? South or north. Uh, actually. The top of the sheet is west. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is counting on that. And, and, uh, if you look at the if you look at the site plan and look at the other houses, they fit into their area with a little more relaxation, even though they are are there and the houses exist. But you you look at the amount of green space that they have, and the view from different places. I would just like to, I'd like to see some elevations of what's really there, if that would be okay. And okay. I would like, I would be agreeable with moving the pool closer to the guest house. I guess that would be it for now. That's okay. Thank you, Diane. How about you, Kara? Um, I'm having a hard time sort of reconciling the quote unquote beachy character of this and the formality of how things are so orthogonally lined up and, you know, the boardwalk straight shot down. I'm not so convinced the boardwalk is really what we want to see from Eastern Street, knowing that the house in the background is pretty grand and the whole setup seems um, I don't know, less than beachy to me. Um, the, the pool, I'm just, 
I, I can't really vote for the pool in this neighborhood because I don't really think there are any private pools in this neighborhood. And I think starting a precedent here is not a great idea. Visible or not, I hate to say it, I'm sorry. But that's yeah. all I got right now. All right. Um, could, could, could you come back to me when there's a break? Um, also, there's some background noise that's I, I can't hear very well. Um, well, go ahead, Abby. I, oh, okay. I think we may oh, have solved the, oh, it was Andrew. Andrew's the culprit. Um, well, he's in that purple room. He's in a sort of overnight disco or something. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's at a disco in Iceland right now. Ah. Yeah. That's um, his bedroom. So, <laughs> oh, there um, we change. Look at that. So, Abby, you had some additional it, comments. Go it ahead. It escaped, uh, when I'm looking at this, it escaped the, the, the four car parking, I think it, it is, is too, uh, I would like, I don't mind the cars going towards the garage and locate that, but it would be really nice if there, there were, was more greenery in front of the guest cottage instead of cars. Um, we recently okayed something, I think it's up on Lincoln Circle, and I was driving around there, and it really looks bad to see like four cars parked in front of a building on the street. It, I gotta say, I. I missed that before, um, and I it's not a good look. Um, this we're we're here to also be beautiful for the public, and seeing four cars instead of your beautiful architecture, um, it's just not it's just not right. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Abby. Um, one of the advantages of going last is is I get to hear everybody else's comments. And I think that you have your homework assignment for you, Andrew. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna increase the assignment. I I, I have a good idea. I, I know okay. what we need to do. I, I think Mirka and I we're we're on it. Yep. All right, yep. very good. Uh, hey, some pictures of, of that sort of random um antique uh granite that you're proposing there. Mm -hmm. Some photographs of that would be helpful. You know, I've seen it before. I really like it, but I think that showing some pictures of how that would actually look might might help your case a little bit. Um, but anyway, do we have a motion on this one? Call for revisions. Sounds good to me. Thank you, Diane. On the motion, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. And so. We're going to go from workshop Thank APD you. old business to workshop APD new business at 44 yes. Monomoy Road. And now Stephen gets to shine. Um, I'm going to try to make these three applications somewhat um, easy for all of you. So the, um, a client has purchased this property. We're trying to, before we start designing, the goal is to try to understand what the board's um, position will be on, on a, a few things. There are, there are three buildings on the property. There's a garage and a studio, which are, I think, from the 60s or 70s in some cases. They're not very old. Hey, can the I, house. Can answer, oh, hold on sure. one second. Is this the building that was moved from Sconset? No, that's no. across the street, right? Uh, that's uh, across the street. Oh, this, is this, this structure, okay. this, is, this is a house. What you're looking at right now, the left portion of the image on the left, the main mass is yeah. a house from approximately 1920 to 1930. Okay. It has been significantly renovated and altered and added on to over the years, um, in many cases absorbing what was, I think, some of the original charm of the house. What I am trying to, and the, and the other two accessory buildings are, are not contributing at all. There is historic documentation on this building I apologize, it has two addresses, both a Berkeley Avenue address and a Monomoy Road address. So it can be a little confusing because I submitted under the Monomoy address, but the historic information is from the Berkeley side. So um, it's, okay. it's listed in many different ways. What I'm trying to understand is, before we start designing of what the board's um, uh, temperature is on one, partial demolition of the historic house, meaning remove what has been added on and take back the existing house, pick it up, move it somewhere on the site and maybe make it the guest house. 
Is that something the board would allow? Um, or does the board have a position on older homes that have been sort of uh, chopped up and changed over time? I mean, it hasn't been changed that much, but some of the porch on the, on the rear side is, is not, I don't know, it feels odd compared to what was there just to get a sense of what your position would be on how to alter this structure and possibly removing it from the site. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, Ray, so the applications I... I need to have, I can't say anything but you, Andrew. Oh, oh, that's interesting because I can see the photographs. How's everybody else doing? I can see the photographs. Me too. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Mr. Um, Chair, Diane, you might you might need to change your settings. That's exactly it, Mr. Chair. It's her views. Yeah. So what you need to do is go over to like there's different uh, views where you can have like the person I talking. Got it. Be small. I got it. You yeah, got it. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just no, no. No problem. It happens every now and again. So um, Andrew, got what you're after. So the first person, the first stop in this is to talk to Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, actually, um, Andrew's um, company actually reached out to me uh, okay. to get some uh, historic information. He is absolutely correct that the HDC survey from the 1980s indicates this as nine Berkeley, because if you look on the Locust map, you can see that it's actually situated between Berkeley Ave and Monomoy Road, even though now it has a 44 Monomoy Road. Um, this structure is a circa 1920 colonial revival. Um, in this, in this location, I think it's actually been in the in, in a, one of the ownerships for quite a while. Um, nonetheless, obviously, this is con contributing towards the National Register. From a, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that there is this whole sounds like exercise is not necessarily a flat demo move. It's tried to figure out from the commission what you're looking for. For it if, absolutely um, is Holly, I promise. That's what okay. I'm here for. Sorry. Thank, thank you, Andrew. No, th I think that's that's helpful because I was concerned, first of all, it would be a shame to lose these this contributing colonial revival structure. There was a lot of them built um, around this 20s, 30s, and 40s in this area of Monomoy. Um, they do uh, obviously pre present a time frame in Nantucket's history of being a, a, a seasonal location um, as it obviously has, has bloomed into what it is now. Um, the name of this structure is called Windy Way, pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously concerned on what the intention would be. It would be a shame to lose this in its entirety, um, but also it would be nice to have more documentation on this. So if we know that there's actually part of the main structure, um, would, do you have the HDC survey available, um, Kadeem? I think it's in the, it's in the application. Just wanted to go down to that, if if I may. If not, yep, right there, maybe. No. Oh, up further. It would be nice. Basically, what I'm getting at is to know what exactly is is towards the. See if you look at the photo there. We can clearly tell from the existing photographs of the structure versus this photo from the 80s. So there have been additions done um, as far as you know some fenestration changes, but for the most part the facade seems to be the same, obviously with a larger addition. So it would be nice to know what has, what those additions have been over time and maybe bring it back to the original 1920s uh, Gambrel. Um, those are my comments on this uh, application, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thanks so much, Holly. That was great. Um, Stephen, since we haven't heard from you in a while, you want to start? Did, did Stephen leave us? Let's see. Holly, could I just add one thing that I think it's fair to say that the other two outbuildings have no historic significance at all, that they're not part of any of the historic information that we've, did, that we've uncovered from the site. They've been built at a much later date. There was an HDC survey for a garage that was associated with this Gambrell that was dated to the 1930s. Clearly, the architecture is different, but it would be nice to see if that structure just evolved itself versus being a completely new structure. So I would request some um, investigation. Well, 
Andrew, the, the guest house and the garage are the next application. So let's stay on the house for now. I'm not, I see Stephen there. My, my, but, my mic's back. Oh, okay. Thanks, are Mr. You, Chair. Yeah, are you so, ready? Uh, uh, thank you. So Andrew, I think if you're gonna give the agency an inch, we'll take a mile. Sure, keep the, as much as you possibly can where you can. Um, and I'm not being facetious, but I, I, it's hard to say, would, would I not vote for something if it were to be moved someplace? Would I vote no on an application if you're going to move a structure somewhere within the confines of this, of the lot? Um, probably not. Uh, if you're going to make major dramatic contemporary type changes, that might be a, a different answer. So I'm not quite sure how to answer you other than that at this point. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Abby, you ready? Yeah, I mean, I'll take a stab at it. Um, mm -hmm. that, that is a pretty open question, but um, off the top of my head, I think it would be a better approach to this site with this older house to keep it in situ where it is um, and build around it um, in a more subordinate way to it. And um, that would be my off the top of my head approach to this project. Um, I do think the back has been sort of, I don't know what they did to the back of the house, but it's not very attractive and it doesn't really go with the front. But um, so I wouldn't mind seeing that change, but um, I, I would keep it where it is and add elsewhere. Okay, thanks, Abby. Diane. Yeah, I'm with keeping it where it is. I think it was set up originally. If you look at the site plan, uh, to be in a good position, and I think we should honor the position it was put in back then. I think you've got enough land to do something else adding on or coming off the uh, the back or I don't know what your plans are for that second structure behind the little tree. I would rather see it come be reduced if you were if you were going to make if it's not part of the original building. It's a lovely piece of land. And it's uh, a focal piece as you go down Monomoy and then turn to the right and go down the rest of it. <coughs> and it uh, I would like to see it stay where it is. I would like to see the, it would be wonderful if you could change the facade of the building back to what it was. I loved the way it looked back in the 1920s and 30s, but I would like to see it stay where it is. Okay. Thank you very much, Diane. How about you, Carrie? Um, yeah, I think this was an important sort of era in Nantucket architecture. Um, just what all of what was going on in the 20s, 30s on Nantucket. And this is a great example of the architecture that was happening. And I agree that this should, um, remain on the site, depending, I suppose, depending on where it would be proposed to move to, I do think it should still be accessible and prominent um, visibility wise, because I think as it sits, it's sited really great right now. And if it were to move, I would want it, I, want, I would want this to take precedence over whatever else was coming along the pike, um, just as the example that it is, that's it. Mm -hmm. Can, I, can well I add to my comment? Yeah, you can. Go ahead, Abby. Um, that I think to make this like a secondary building on the site with a, with a historic portico like that for a front door, it would look silly. I mean, right now that, that front door has a, has a presence that you're, you're not going to get uh, uh, by, by putting another building in its place. It's, it's, it says, I am the main building right here. Come on in the front door. Okay. So I, don't, I think moving that somewhere else on the property is going to lose its purpose. Yeah. Okay, Abby. Thank, Thank you. you. So a um, couple things, Andrew. One is this, this is like the, 
your beauty is your curse kind of event where you've got a really great looking uh, Gambrel um, colonial revival 1920s um, ha that has a, a lot of character, at least from the roadside. I would agree that the, the backyard uh, is less so, but it has an incredible street presence. Um, I personally would not mind you stripping back anything that you can demonstrate that is newer. Um, I don't think that you could su successfully take a building of this size and call it a guest house. It just has, it, it has too much presence. Mm -hmm. So it would really need to kind of remain the main form um, as has been said by a number of the members. Uh, in terms of moving it, I'm okay with the idea of moving it not to relegate it to some corner of the site, but you know, in terms of like overall site strategy, if you moved it and it still had a presence on the street the way it is now, that's fine. Um, you know, I would, you're probably going to put it on a new foundation. I would think that you would anyway. So kind of the same stuff that all the other board members have said. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it is all very helpful, everyone. Okay. Thank you. So. I was all for a vision. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's the motion we'd be looking for. So thanks, Diane. On the motion, Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye, and I really appreciate Andrew's approach to this. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. Um, thanks, Carrie and Diane. On your motion. <clears throat> Aye, and I do appreciate coming to us with the questions like this. It's good. Yeah. Agreed. And I'm, I'm learning. The, I'm learning. I'm learning. In favor, of the, <laughs> I'm in favor of the motion. Life is all about learning. Um, so you want to track the garage? Well, like I'm not sure about that because the difference between what we just reviewed and the guest house and the garage is that I believe these are newer buildings. That's correct. That don't have a contributing aspect to them. So he's probably looking for us to to review these. And That's correct. I, I would also solicit um, uh, Holly's opinions on these two outbuildings. So I think we, I say we move forward with the demo move off of the guest house, which we're looking at now. Anything to say uh, on this, uh, Andrew? Nothing to say. This building is for sure not, it's not that old. How much um, for sure? Like, do you have a date on it? I think it's, it's might be the late 60s, 70s. Late 60s, 70s. Holly? Yeah. Anything on this one? <coughs> Mr. Chair, what I could find, and it's kind of hard to de deceiving here because our NHL only represents the data for the main structure. Um, so I have to resort to looking at the um, tax assessor's office. Yeah. And this structure is indicated as, as 1996. That, you know, oh. that sounds right to me. Yeah, I actually, I'm thinking of different projects. 60s is yeah, early. I think you're right. Yeah, sorry, Helen. Yep. Yeah. So that that's okay. you know, that's the comment, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, all right, board members, how do we feel about this guest house? Can it be moved rather than demolished? Well, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm applied for. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Andrew. That's all. I just. All right. I hate um, to go. Well, as you as is the case with all of this stuff, whenever you have a dwelling that is slated for demolition, the building department actually requires you to advertise it. I think we're, we're all aware of this. So yep. that, that's a must. And then if there's if there's anyone out there that can actually use the building and move it off, um, they get it. So that's that. Uh, thanks, Diane. Abby. It gets. Um, it's it's yeah. so sweet. Um, I, I just my head boggles. Um, I, I, it just so this is a move demo. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I just don't get it. Maybe it's just me. I've gone mad. Um, I just don't get it. But uh, I'm sure the building is in like perfectly good repair. Yeah, it's recent. It's, you know. it looks like a really well kept up um, building. So, 
Um, I hear you. Well, I, I put more pressure on the on the main building, so I would be okay. okay. All right, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I think a, a reuse of this building is a wonderful idea. Uh, okay. Um, Motion to approve is submitted. Well, okay, so let, let me break down what you just said. Reuse, I believe that anyone on the board would, or anybody anywhere would say reusing a building is, is far better than crushing it up and taking it to the dump. However, if he can't find anybody to take the building, are you okay right. with actual demolition? If yes, if there's not a market for it, we currently do not have a repository for building that are dismantled or in whole or in part. Right. Um, the fact of the matter is life needs to go on. Um, and this is not a historic structure. So if we want to make a statement that we think that we should be sequest reusing sequestered carbon, great, but I don't believe that's our role. So I am going to vote yes for a move off demo. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Um, Carrie, Maybe what's your view of sequestered role. carbon? Maybe it should become our role. We've seen more and more new buildings getting trashed. And it seems to me that, you know, on a huge site, you could recycle and reuse. But yeah, we don't, we don't roll that way. So it's not old. It's not contributing. Therefore, we, we sort of have to let it go, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. So hopefully somebody in the neighborhood will take this building because it's, it's really attractive and I'm sure it's well-maintained. Um, Maybe the so homeowner what, will want to really realize they can reuse it somehow. What the, what the homeowner should be doing is buying a, a site someplace and just putting it down and they could probably make money selling it. Um, or gut it and make it more usable to their own program. Yeah, true, too. I could give you the dissertation, but I won't take up more of your time. No, 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 no. So I, I think we're, we're going um, to. Can somebody give me a motion on this one? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted subject to lest there be any any misinterpretation of my motives that the that a flyer would go out to the affordable housing group directly to let them know that this is going to be noticed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. Okay. Good. Point. Absolutely would. It, I do that every time. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. Okay. On Stephen's motion, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Reluctantly. Aye. Yeah. Diane. Reluctantly. Reluctantly. Aye. <laughs> I know. Um, it's just happening far too often. Thanks, Diane. Uh, Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor of motion carries. Thanks. Could, I, could I ask you one question? It may not be the time. If it isn't, just tell me no. Shut up. Do, do you I, mean ask a question of me or ask a question yeah, of you? No, ask a question of you, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. One of the reasons that people don't move houses is the cost Correct. of moving them. That's right. Would it be appropriate for the HTC to institute a warrant article saying that in the case of moving a, a building for the use of housing authority that the movers would reduce their fee by 50 percent or something so it doesn't become a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to move a house that you're trying to set up for for housing it, it happens every time. Every time we learn about they don't want to move it like that little cottage that was in absolutely perfect shape in Sconset. And so, Diane, that's a, that's a wonderful idea with a really good intent. So if the onus is placed on the movers that are, you know, in the business to make money, they're going to object to that, like, uh, uh, vehemently. What what the town should do, I think, is, you know, now we're getting into an opinion thing. What the town should do is subsidize uh, the move of houses so that it makes it cost effective to move, you know, and the mover would still make his money on moving it, et cetera, et cetera. But I, there's got to be a solution to this somewhere because there's too many of these things that are just like going to the dump. And then anyway. we 
pay for them to go from the dump somewhere else. The people lose the house and yeah. we lose the area. I just, I, there's got to be a way to handle it. And I wasn't sure how, if we could at least it institute it. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yes, Stephen. Could, could we put this on our agenda? Because I think it would be easy to think that a house moved at $150,000, put on a $50,000 foundation with another $50,000 in electric and plumbing is too expensive because in this instance, it would be less than $150 a square foot, which is an iota of what the open market costs for a home. So I just would hate, I don't disagree with Diane's comment that it would be helpful for something to be done, but I, I think if we're going to have a discussion, we should have a discussion as all. Well. Yeah, you, yeah. so Kadeem. You there, Kadeem? I'm here. Okay, can you put down under old business, uh, not old business, under um, other, other, business. other business, discussion of options for moving of housing? I think that's vague enough to be that's able to allow us to Mr. Open. Chair, if that, I may on this topic, yeah, of course, I just wanted to let the commission know that WPI students are actually taking on this semester uh, this topic about salvaging the historic nature of Nantucket, reducing the construction and demolition waste of a small island. And actually uh, staff will be meeting with uh, myself, the energy coordinator, as well as our uh, recycling coordinator meeting with the WPI students tomorrow to start oh, this. That, that they, is totally as fantastic. part of this project, they will be interviewing the HDC Historical Commission, any other commissions and boards that are associated with this whole topic. So well, let's have them participate in the discussion if we can. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's great, Holly. Thanks so much. That's really super news. Um, okay. So moving right along, we're going to go now to the garage. I don't, I don't want to take up too much of the board's time because I know you already you did. You already get, did. I know. I'm sorry. That, that I'm actually scale. impressed for time too. This is the original building that was there. Based on what I could tell from the building that is there, it has been demolished and a new building was constructed. Their footprint is not the same. There's nothing about it that is similar to the garage okay, so that's on the site today. Right. So this is the old garage from 1938. Correct. Correct. And w what's the new? Oh, that's yes. the new garage. Well, yes, you're right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty. I'm not just saying it. I'll take the whale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can. And I'll take the strap hinges. Somebody yeah. must want those green shutters. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, on that Sorry. note, and that's why I, I had Kadeem bring up the HDC survey because I think it's important. Um, yeah. Obviously, at some point, the existing Gambrell uh, garage went in its place. But if you look at this HDC survey in relationship to the location of the existing garage, yeah. there's a possibility that not was it was it not de demoed but converted. For on that note, it would be nice to have the age of the existing garage verified to make sure that it's not this part that was incorporated into the um, existing structure. Well, that's a relatively easy thing. If Andrew hasn't already done it, all he needs to do is walk in the garage and see what the framing looks like. We have photos. I will do that. Yeah. I will. Okay. I will. I've done that. I will do that, Mr. Chair, and I will bring that back. So if you want to. Hold for revisions. But that's let, fine. Yeah. Let, so let's just hold this for some further his, uh, documentation. Oh, fair enough. Fair Thank enough. You. Okay. So Diane has made a motion to hold this for documentation of framing. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. There you go, Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Now, uh, you want to do 45 Shakamo? Yes, because this should be, be actually be Thursdays are all yours. Right. I'm very sorry. This should be fairly easy. Uh, this project was just approved um, a few weeks ago. Okay. And all we did was um, like adjust a few of the, the window, the window trim because the owner wanted to. Um, we slid the house around on the site and created a step down, which is why all the ridges are highlighted because we actually lowered it into the grade both on the two sides and you know there was a lot of discussion with the board there's no visibility to the structure so i don't think any I'm, i was surprised it didn't go on consent all right um just because the changes were pretty minor 
Okay. Pretty insignificant. I, it, it would appear so. And, and I do remember this. This was recent enough that. Uh, yes. Uh, yep. Hey, hey um, how come you bubbled the big vertical window on uh, which elevation would that be? The, the one at the bottom there. Because we had had shutters on those windows before and the shutters were all taken off. So the window itself hasn't changed. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, board members. I, think sure. I, I looked at this, at this earlier and I think all the changes are minor. There's Thank a lot you. of them, but they're not significant. Uh, translation that you're, you're okay with this? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Carrie. How about you, Diane? I was just wondering about he's circled or bubbled a lot of the windows. Are you putting in new windows or? No, it was that there were shutters on them before, Diane. Oh, okay. So that we took them off. Well, I appreciate what you've done. I think it will fit in nicely and uh, I have no problem. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Abby. All right, now that I understand it, I, I couldn't understand. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. Thank you. Stephen, unless you have any objections, I think we could move forward with a motion. I think, uh, uh, I don't think I'm on this one. Uh, yeah, you are. It's new business. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, motion to approve is submitted. Sounds good. Thanks, Stephen. On the motion, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Thanks. All right. Thank you we'll all very later, much. Andrew. Thank you. All Bye. right. Uh, okay. So let's see. Is Mark on? Mark Poor, that is. Mr. Chair, I don't see Mark Poor on. Do we see Annie Bissinger? I'm just running down the list. I, I would hate to pass him by. Uh, but he does not appear to be here. So how about Jeff Morash? Is he here? Um. Mr. Chair, we're holding that one for SAB um, review on Monday, then that'll come back to you. They also did not um, submit the electronic submission, so we were holding Okay, that. all right. So I'm, I'm just going down because I want to, if we're gonna be passing a lot of these over, I wanna do them all masked rather than one by one. So now what we have- about Winchester Street? Well, we got one White Street, that's Val, she's yep. not here. So we're and gonna hold that- here. Sure. Ben is here. Okay, so the first order of business then would be to hold items five through seven for representation. So move. Thank you, Diane. Uh, on the motion, Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Ben, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Okay, so now we're to Ben at One Chester Street. Yep. So uh, we looked at this house a couple of weeks ago, or month and a half ago on some window changes. Mm -hmm. um, we are, we want to, we're, um, the application in front of you today is to amend that permit or that approval to add a roof walk to the structure. Uh, that, that's all we're asking for here. Um, the design that you're seeing on, in front of you, um, we've located the posts of the roof walk in line with the uh, large um, rafter beams in the, in the framing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what guided us to this pattern. Um, <clears throat> natural the weather skirt, uh, painted railings and posts and uh, fascia. And, um, you know, we also uh, went to HSAB. Um, HSAB would, would, and Holly will go through their exact minutes, but they had suggested that we go to a two bay format rather than this three bay. <clears throat> Um, which we're happy to do. Um, it's it just the loading of it then now falls between the, if we were to center it on the ridge, the okay. loading of those posts will fall off of the big rafter beams, um, which we can deal with, but it just seemed not how they would historically have done it. Um, right. it, al it, also, oh, it also just throws off our kind of historical access to the chimney, which, um, you know, obviously we're not, using the roof walk to maintain the chimney anymore, but uh, there is that kind of narrative of the roof walk in proximity to a chimney. Um, and right. So, so um, 
Ben, when they suggested a two bay, did they mean it to be one third narrower? I, I believe so. I, uh, my associate was actually at that HSAB, so I, I don't know the exact minutes, but I would think they'd want one third smaller and, and I would assume centered. Yeah, of um, course, the, centered, but yeah. yeah, okay. But your, your, your um, assertion is that this three bay works better because it's sitting on top of the, the large uh, timbers that are the rafters in the, in the old house. Yep. So thanks, Ben. Let's hear from Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is a uh, typical Nantucket, actually circa uh, 1794 by Jonathan Barney, who was a sea captain of the Bedford. Um, obviously, and it has a Greek revival doorway that was a later addition per Lancaster. HSAB looked at this on October 18th, so this week, um, and they said that we need to see evidence that a roof lock existed on this house at one time. I agree. It, it, was there any um, photographs? Um, uh to it, they also say that um, is it it's too long, reduce the length from three sections to two. So I, I, I agree with what everybody's been saying that it's taking that bay off is what they're recommending. Um, a house of this age should have a roof walk with simple details, eliminate the skirt boards and utilize a traditional roof hatch on the backside. And with that, I agree. Um, this proposal is 22 uh, feet, three inches long by eight feet, three and a half inches wide. Um, I would also recommend to refer to figure 78 of page um, 83, a building with Nantucket in mind for those traditional roof walk designs. A skirt is actually not appropriate, especially with this um, architecture based on the hip design guidelines. Those are the comments, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thanks a lot, Holly. Who would like to begin? I'll go. Thank you, Diane. Go ahead. I think number one, no, I don't believe on the Chester Street being a very short street has uh, roof walks on it. I don't see in, in the photographs, I see one over on, an, on the back end, which I do not believe was is Chester Street. I think it's a very simple building. It's old building. And I think it should stay that way. Otherwise, if it's people are going to have it, I would have it a two, two no skirt and a hatch to go up on the roof. But I think that it's, I would hope that it would stay clear, free and clear of roof walk. Okay, thanks, Diane. Abby. Um, what is the roof material? Are, are, is it, uh, or what is it going to be? Uh, it'll remain the uh, black asphalt uh, three okay. tab that's there now. All right. So um, I, I I think the combination of uh, I, I'm looking across the street at a, a sim similar house that was it was a, a three bay and they turned it into this Georgian balanced uh, kind of house and <laughs> but the, we we recommended white balustrade with a natural weather skirt. And I'm looking at it right now. And I got to tell you, this combination on an old historic house really looks off. It really looks like, like it looks very modern to have the two, the paint and the natural weather. And I would say go one way or the other. Um, I, I personally like it with a skirt, but I think it should be white. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. So, I, I mean, that's, you got to come see this because <laughs> this guy went all the way up there and took off all the white white paint on the skirt because they did it wrong. And I guess oh, no. he must have caught it. Somebody caught it, and this wow. guy has been scraping it off. But, <laughs> but um, I think since it's been made, I, I, I call this a Georgian Georgian architecture because it's so symmetric. I don't know if that's true, but I think if you go with that new sort of elaborate front door, I think the white skirt on with with the you know i i think it's the right proportion personally um so i'm okay with the scale and um that's that's what i have thank okay. you okay thank you abby steven uh thanks mr chair um yeah if you go around the corner on cliff road there are four of these actually there's five one's natural to weather 
Uh, two of them have skirts and three of them don't, if I've done my math right. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty squarely in the no skirt camp. Uh, I think it detracts from the architecture of the structure and much more so if it's painted. So I would suggest, um, I believe the natural one is kind of tucked in and that's got a skirt, uh, it blends better, but I would uh, think most appropriate would be a white with no skirt, white right. trim, no skirt. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Stephen. Carrie. I agree with Stephen. I think this is an old house and the skirt is not appropriate. Okay. I'm feeling the same. I think that Ben's intention in terms of the three bay, A, getting it close to the chimney, which it is, um, and also having those posts correspond with the existing rafters in, this, in the roof, rather than monkeying around with new framing, that's all good. The only thing that I don't love is the skirt, which I think is a little too ornate for this very simple house. Um, so I would be in favor of a white painted roof walk with a hatch in the back, no skirt, just at, as drawn without the skirt. Mm -hmm. So um, moved. Okay, so there's a motion to approve this uh, roof walk, albeit without the skirt and with a hatch on the back side, which would be the north elevation, um, painted white. That is the motion. On the motion, Diane. No. No, okay, Abby. Uh, it, it, then, sorry, it's staying the same size. Same size, just no skirt. Yeah, okay, uh, I'll go along with it. Okay, so that's I. Uh, Carrie. Aye. All right, and Stephen. Aye. On your motion, and uh, I'm in favor. So the motion carries four in favor, one opposed. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. All right, should we try for just one more before we adjourn, that being a roof solar array at eight Starbuck? I don't know, I'm going a little fuzzy. What? I'm going a little fuzzy. Come on, hang in there. One more, one more. It means that we're not gonna have to review this on Tuesday. Yeah, let's do it. Think of it that way. Okay, let's go. Do we, oh, I should ask if there's somebody here to rep. Yeah, hey guys, it's oh, Tim. Oh, hi Tim, yep. Hi. All right, let's, let's go. go. All right. Thank you for, oh, oh, uh, for everybody who's listening in and waiting. This is it. This is the last one for Thursday. Everything's good. Everything else is going to Tuesday. Okay. So we've got, we're proposing to build a 21 panel array on the Southeast and Southwest elevations of the property. The South elevation is Southeast elevation is on the rear of the house and the Southwest elevation is on the side of the house. Yeah. Okay. The house has a dark gray asphalt roof. The panels on the rear of the house will not be visible. The panels on the west elevation will not be visible from the north or from in front of the house. There will be some visibility when approaching from the southwest. To help okay. mitigate this, we've pushed the panels to the rear of this pitch. And I also note there's a large chimney on the west side of the house, which sort of acts as a focal point when you approach from the southwest and does also provide screening. Okay, which so you let's see from the pictures. A few things. Let, let's see the rest of the proposal. Yep. Like ideally some photographs of the house. There we go. So the, the folks, the, uh, the array that's gonna be most in question on this uh, application is the is the roof plane where the chimney is the side yeah right there okay so there's there yeah. are panels going on that um the other question i had was, was this uh, is this a madicate advisory thing um it is your or it is mr chair but we did not get comments from them okay so we're on our own folks you are yeah what do we think well, it, it's sorry, but uh, sorry to chime in, but I just well, wanted, you're you're on it, so go. I uh, just wanted to reconfirm that we're looking right down the driveway at these panels. Uh, we've yeah. seen so, yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're sort of as you go from looking directly in front, if you're dead in front of the house, you're not going to see it because you can see the house is elevated uh from the you know it, it sits up from the road 
But, uh, but so to, to, sorry to interrupt him, but to Abby's point, here, there's your curb cut for your yep. driveway if going you, in so that, you know, there's complete visibility. I mean, it's sort yep. of- Yep, we're not hiding that, right? Okay. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes. It looks like you have a big T of undevelopable land behind the house. And I just wonder uh, why a ground array wouldn't suit that area perfectly. It's a great question. Yeah. Hmm. Mesa. So it's possible we, we might run into some Mesa issues on that as well. Um, with the, uh, with the land. Well, okay, but th that's, a, that's a very good question question it's an interesting shape for a lot I, I can't quite understand how it would have come into being however that might work in in your favor tim um okay so let's, go. yeah I'll go, go ahead diane i i think the view from the southwest is couldn't be more open there's no it's up too high to make trees are going to be there by the time it's looked at i think the that carries suggestion of putting it as a uh, land solar pa panel is good. It can be stretched out. It can be tucked behind the house. And I, I you can't put it on the roof of the house and follow the present uh, feelings of solar panels. Okay. Thank you very much, Diane. Let's see, Abby, you started out, but but you, I don't think you really finished. I, I rest my case with my question. All right. So basically you're concerned about the visibility on that roof plane where the chimney. Correct. Okay. Got it. Um, and Carrie, you, I'm going to assume that because you raised the issue of a ground array that you two have concerns with the. Yeah. I mean, the chimney doesn't help hide it. It accentuates it because the chimney draws your eye right to that plane. So. Right. Well, well said. Uh, Stephen, uh, I agree with the comments that made. I did a quick uh, search, Tim, uh, of the GIS, and it doesn't appear to have any um, oh natural resources conflicts. So good. There you go. Okay. Something okay. Thank you, everyone. Into. Okay. So that's it. I think the concerns are pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully, they didn't. They it didn't come as a surprise to you, Tim. Um, but so can we move for um, some revisions on this guy? I'll make so the moved. motion. Uh, Diane, go ahead. You made a motion, I, right? Uh, made the motion, yeah. Okay, to hold for revisions. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Stephen. I'm an aye. Very good. Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That's the end of our show for today. Um, shall we just adjourn? Let's so moved. Adjourn. Rock and roll. Okay, thanks everybody. I, thanks I'm guys. I'm not covered for Thursday. Um, so there's a motion to adjourn on the motion. Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen on your motion. Aye, have a great weekend. Yeah, and I'm in favor. Uh, and thanks, I second Stephen's motion to have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye everyone.